post our checklist. Cockpit pressurization procedure. He is completed. Jock's burger stick. Removed. Parking brake. He is reset. Oxygen. It's on. Take off data. He is uh, reviewed. Take off briefing. He is completed. Navigation lights. He is on. Anti collision beacon. He is on ground. Battery. Correct, 26 volts. Uh, the doors are closed. Engine anti ice. He is off. Fuel. He is checked and we have 8,000 pounds. And circuit breakers. He is all checked on my, checked side, on my side before check, before start check is completed. Okay, fantastic. So, let's get this going. Shunt that you master. Also good. Tools are good. Pumps are as required. Doors confirmed close. We ready on the time? Okay. Ready? Okay, clear on the right. Clear right. Starting number two. Rotation. Oil pressure. In the 60 PSI. Ready for 12% on the energy. Fuels in. No pressure in 40%. There's a second stage. Solar off. ITT 780. ITT is less than 750. Zero. Plus minus 1000. Plus minus 65. Around 130 pounds. TCPs are in the green, bringing it up to high idle and switching the right generator on. Generator is on positive load. We are bringing on our AC buses. There we go. So now we have AC power. Here we're less than 50% on load for that site. So we're just going to do our AC bus check. Okay, frequency is good. We're going to check our voltage we're on that side. Switch off our right inverter. We floss it. Nice it is illuminated, going for the transfer. It's back, it's extinguished, switch it back on. Left inverter, so good. Voltage, we'll check that. Between 110 and 120, switch it off. Illuminated, lost, transferring to the other side. It's back, it's extinguished and back to time. Perfect, set. We'll start the left edge. Ready on time? Ready. Start number one. Rotation, oil pressure, drop set. Let's go again. Get on the second stage. Solar is off, ITT 760. Stable start, bring the right side down to low iron. We'll switch off the right generator. Switch on the left one. Positive load on the left, check the voltages on there. Good, switch on the right generator again. Extinguished, parallel within 10%. Get that going. Are you doing the uh, DC checks? So we're on the center bus because we open the gen ties. It's gone up by about one volt. The nine centers are open. Close it. Back to normal. Testing bus sets. Let the test switch. We have our right gen tie, band tie, and left gen tie, but open the nine centers with no voltage on the center bus. We still have voltage on triple bus. Resetting. Nine saves extinguished. Voltage is back on set to us. And that is our start complete. You can continue with your after start. And we are started. Off start checklist. Yeah. After start check is electrics. It is checked. Standby horizon power. It is on. Trimmers. Checked. Cabin controller. It is set. Rudder boost. It's on. Environmentals. It is currently on. After start check is complete. Yeah, that's going to be a full tech checklist. Full tech checklist. Instru uh, flight instruments. Set and Flight controls. Full free. Manual feather. Checked. Auto feather. Checked. System, System checks. System checks on beepers. Engine anti ice. E. Swap. Ice protection. Oh. Rock levers. All for it. Flaps. 17. Environmental. Is off. TKAT. Is TARA. Enunciator lights. It's considered. Takeoff clearance. Uh, not obtained yet. Engine auto ignition. Spot. Power steering. He is not required. Anti, uh, anti skid. Spot. Landing lights. Uh, we'll get that with the takeoff clearance. And strobe lights. He is on. Before takeoff check is complete. Trailer 1, you're cleared for takeoff, runway 07, fly runway heading, climb and maintain 8,000 feet, 
QNH is 1020. Flight maintain uh, 8,000 feet on runaway heading. QNH 1020, turn off. So take a while. Take off power set. 80 knots. Check. V1, rotate. Positive line. Clear up. Gear up, no lights. Acceleration altitude. Flaps up, climb sequence. Speed check. Yep, Trainer 1, report on reaching 8000. More on reaching 8000, Trainer 1. Flaps up, indicated. Climb sequence complete. My throttles get the off stake of checklist. Off the deck of checklist. Depending gear control. Up, no lights. Flaps up. Indicated your damper third one. Environmentals not applicable. Engine instruments checked. The images and pressures within the green. Ultimate is only for Q and H. Air conditioning and pressurization is required. Off the deck of check is complete. Check, thank you. 1000 feet to the roof. Check to the roof. 500 feet to the roof. Trainer 1, maintaining 8000 feet. Trainer 1, Roger. Engine find the number two engine. I agree. So let's see. We have a T handle here. So that's our current only enunciation. So we'll consider that as an engine fire. Okay. Perfect. Let's get the memory items for engine fire in flight. Okay. Confirm number two. Uh, that is confirmed. Confirm number two. Copy. Confirm number two. Copy. Confirm number two. Flight. T handle. A film. Confirm number two five extinguisher. We still have denunciation, but let's use the extinguisher. The enunciation has gone away, so fire is a free And okay, let me get this trimmed for you. I've said this to be continuous. You have control. Eight thousand dropped, hundred and eighteen knots. And uh, we have a right engine for you. I'm now going to do these. Uh, you will land the radios. Engine failure. Engine fire or failure in flight. Fixed engine. Condition lever is cut off. Lever lever is fed. T handle is pulled. And the extinguisher is actually in port. Auto ignition is off. Quarter feather is off. Prop sink is off. The right generator is coming off. Electrical load. Uh, we are sustaining everything on the left generator currently, but it's well within limits. And then the bleed air valve on the right side on film. That is the number two bleed air valve. And that is the checklist on the fleet. We'll get in touch with ADC and inform them about our situation and we'll make that. Let's see how tower trainer one engine fed number two engine. I think that's top there. Tower trainer one understand engine failure. Um, we'll provide vectors for a return to land area. We'll be forming a one engine in op to approach and land. Uh, we're currently approximately 16,800 pounds. Our approximate VRF will be 118 knots. Our approach speed is confirmed. Our fuel balance is checked. And uh, with the maximum being 200, while well, we do not have one. A pressurization, it's checked. We're currently unpressurized. Bleed air valves on environmentals off, checked. The environment controller is off and the blowers are set to high. We're certain that we'll make the field. We'll set flap 17, putting the gear down. Lights will be as required. Propellers will go to max. Operating engine propeller. And then we'll fly VRF plus 5 knots. We're certain that there's no possibility of go around. We'll put the flaps down to 35 degrees. And then we'll follow 118 knots at VRF and we'll commit a normal landing. And training one, report when you're ready for the approach. Training one, ready for the approach. Then training one, you are cleared for the ILS, runway 07, fire crew standing by. Cleared for the ILS 07, uh, then on the fire crew, training one. Okay, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to make the field. Uh, let's get set flap 17. Let me check. Flap 17 indicated. Checked, uh, geared up. Let me check. Yeah, that's three green. 
21 established ILS 07. 21 cleared to land. Uh, surface wind is light and variable. QNH 1020. QLAND 07, train on. First approach altitude is set for 10,000 feet. Landing gear is done. We properly invest. Is 440. Uh, flaps is 70. Your damp phone is disengaged. Before landing, take your couple. 500 feet stable. Landing. Fly slow. Watch lights low. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. 60 knots. Checked. Trader 1, hold your position. I'll have the fire crew come out and tell you clear the active. Trader 1, uh, stop the one. Well, hello and welcome to uh, Simulflight Speechcraft 1900 uh, Simulator here at our headquarters in, in Midrand. Uh, you joined us as Raymond and uh, Diafan uh, were undertaking a typical training scenario. Um, they did a full engine startup, and as you could see, that's uh, all based on the proper operating procedures for the Beechcraft 1900. Uh, they did their checks and then they taxied out to the threshold of 07 and were cleared for departure. Um, as they climbed out of the airfield, they suffered an engine failure um, uh, as, with a fire also on the right-hand engine, which they dealt with smoothly and professionally, and then were returned to Lanseria for an approach and landing, an asymmetric approach and landing on 07. All of those scenarios were controlled from here. We call this the Instructor Operating Station and as I'm sitting here I'm doing the role of the, the instructor this morning. We have two screens essentially. The first screen on the left is where we monitor the progress of the flight. We can also do things like move them to different positions, set them up on approaches uh, and various other things to do with their location and position in flight. On the right hand screen, this is where we introduce the training scenarios, the failures that we like the crew to deal with uh, and to get them into the, the mindset of, of, of uh, understanding how to handle a failure. So I'll just take you through a few of the things that we can actually do from here. The one that I used during the training scenario was actually an engine operation failure where I actually introduced an engine fire on the right hand engine. And I did that just by those few uh, click buttons there. And as you can see, the engine fire is enunciated. They then extinguished the engine using the fire bottles. And at the end of that scenario, they closed the engine down and returned for the asymmetric uh, landing. We can layer failures on top of failures. So, for example, while they're dealing with an engine um, fire, we can introduce problems with the propellers, we can introduce problems with the avionics, all to layer failures on top of other failures. And when we want to clean, clear those fa failures away and let the crew continue with their flight in normal operations, we can reset all failures here. Dealing with weather scenarios, we can automatically apply Category 3, Category 2, Category 1, uh, precision approaches. We can also change the weather to, to non-precision and allow the crew to deal with uh, the different weather scenarios. We can also set up wind shear, we can set up turbulence, we can set up precipitation, heavy rain, snow, etc. Uh, to give them some, some challenges. Other things that we can do, typically in the cabin system, we can simulate an explosive decompression, which is a, a nasty scenario for any crew to have to deal with. That's when the cabin, which is pressurised, becomes depressurised very quickly and the crew have to don oxygen masks and deal with that failure as they would do in real life. And that's done here with explosive decompression, immediate failure. We can also open cabin doors, we can open cargo doors, we can simulate hypoxia and we can even simulate vertigo. So this really is where all of the, the action takes place during the uh, training scenarios. 
Um, and obviously there's set processes and set procedures that we follow uh, to train the crew in all of those different scenarios. If you'd like to come along and have a look and perhaps have an introduction to the system, uh, you're very welcome to get in touch with us, simuflight.co.za, and we'll be very happy to, uh, to help you along and, and show you the system in, in use. Thank you.